The NFC West sent two teams to the playoffs last year with San Francisco and Los Angeles. Niners got to the Super Bowl and are basically co-favorites to get back this year. Cardinals ended the season 4-13, and but Kyler Murray's healthy, and he's got some new weapons. Our lead NFL insider, Jonathan Jones, recently caught up with Kyler Murray, who thinks teams and people from the outside might be sleeping on him. There's no thinking, you know, we're just going out there and doing uh, and, and working on what we're working on, uh, fine-tuning all those things and the details. But um, I'm excited, man. This offense, uh, I put no limitations on this offense, uh, you know, and I know, you know, people are sleeping on us, but it is what it is, you know. Why do you think people are sleeping on you? Do you just pay because, attention to it? No, uh, no you, you see it. You see everything. You see it. Um, try to stay off of social media as much as possible. But, like, you see, obviously, um, who they talk about, who they don't talk about. Um, but like I said, you know, winning cures all. Um, and, uh, yeah, season's right around the corner, so. Let's welcome in Ryan Wilson to talk about the NFC West. R-Dub comb through the schedule like he's combed through that hair. We're going to go in reverse order of how the standings <laughs> finished in 2023. Are you ready, Ryan? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> it's been about two years I've made that joke, so I feel like I can get it out once every uh, 24 months or so. All right, let's get to the Arizona Cardinals, who finished 4-13, and as I mentioned, last season. But you're bullish on them, Artub. You're not sleeping on Arizona 9-8. and eight. Yeah, and Kyler Murray's words are... are could be prophetic, but I think he's right in that teams are not taking, or people are not taking the Cardinals as seriously as they perhaps they should have. Now, when you look at the schedule, I went through the schedule for each of the teams in this division. I had them starting 1-5, and five, but this is a brutal stretch to get things kicked off, and it's reasonable to think they're going to win uh, more than one game in those first six, but you talk at Buffalo, then the Rams, then the Lions. I haven't beaten the Commanders, as you see there. And then it's at San Francisco and at Green Bay, and that will be a true test of just how far this team has come, but I think the overall message Kyler gave our JJ there is that we are better. People are not taking us as seriously as perhaps they should have. I think a huge part of that is Kyler and the way he played coming off that ACL last year, Tommy. I was impressed with what he did. Clearly, the Cardinals front office and coaching staff was because they didn't target a quarterback in the draft. They went out and got Marvin Harrison Jr., who is going to be for Kyler Murray what we saw Jamar Chase do for Joe Burrow, what we saw Steph Diggs do for Josh Allen. And I think that's the reason why this team can get to 9-8. and eight. And if they win more than one of those first six games, maybe Maybe they're double-digit wins, Tommy. And there's an emerging tight end star and McBride as well. So a lot to be bullish on for the Cardinals again. And, and a lot of people, including our Pete Prisco, high on the head coach, said he did a very good job for them last year. Let's get to the Seahawks. They finished 9-8 and eight last year. And again, you've taken a look at the schedule, and it's about the same. Am I right? Yeah, you, you texted me earlier. I didn't realize that uh, I had some duplicates here. I was just going through the schedule and trying to find wins and losses. Obviously, this is the first year without Pete Carroll at the helm for the Seahawks in a long time. But they did pretty good with Mike McDonald, the former defensive coordinator from the Baltimore Ravens, uh, who is going to have this defense on point. That unit will be playing better. And, oh, by the way, Ryan Grubb is the new offensive coordinator. Where did he come from? Well, down the street. He was coaching the Washington Huskies and Michael Penix Jr. You're going to see some of that high-flying offense in Seattle this year now that Shane Waldron has moved on. So I had them going 9-8, the same record uh, as the Cardinals. And there's no stretch in the schedule where they either win more than two in a row or lose more than two in a row. So it's a, it feels like a 500 team that can get some breaks and get the double-digit wins. But I think maybe they're a, a year away, year two with Mike McDonald's when they start to turn the page and, and turn the heat up in that division. It was interesting seeing you mark the wins and losses on that schedule because I did notice they have the Rams late in the season, which could be the difference between a 9-8 and eight and a 10-7. and seven. I only bring that up because if we get to L.A., Ryan, you have them at 10-7, and seven, one win better than Seattle. Yeah, and this... It starts with Matthew Stafford, who feels like he's still 30, 31 years old, and his ability to throw the ball still has one of the best arms in the NFL. We know what Puka Nakua did last year with those 1,400 receiving yards. Cooper Cup's going to be healthy. They continue to get better and younger at the running back position through the draft. Uh, they have uh, Audrey Estime, who they got this year uh, out of Notre Dame. So there's a lot of reasons to feel good about this team. And Yes, Aaron Donald's gone, but they got Jared Verse. They got Jared Verse's teammate, uh, Brayden Fisk, both out of Florida State. They're going to provide some impact. They have some young, really good defensive players. And a name I will have you keep an eye on, Tommy, 
It was Puka Nakua last year. This year, keep an eye on Jordan Woodington, the six-round pick out of Texas. He had a huge week one preseason game. He feels like another great less need Sean McVay pick. He's going to contribute offensively. All told, 10-7. and seven. I think this Rams team is going to go back to the playoffs again uh, because of Matthew Stafford, but I think also the defense won't have quite the drop-off some might expect without Aaron Donald there. It was fun to see them make it to the postseason and they open up the year. Sunday night football with the Lions, so that should be a fun one as part of a tremendous week one slate. And then we'll get to San Francisco again, talking a lot about mirrors in terms of how they finish and how you project them to finish in 2024 here. So take me through the San Francisco schedule and mark those 12 wins for me. Yeah, again, 12 and 5. Brandon Ayuk feels like he's staying put. This is one of the weirdest trade situations I, I can remember in quite some time in the NFL. But they drafted Ricky Pearsall in the first round for a reason, uh, as perhaps a contingency plan without Brandon Ayuk. You still have Debo Samuel, you still have Christian McCaffrey and George Kittle. That offensive line is really good with Trent Williams anchoring the unit, and we know what Brock Purdy can do. But when you look at the schedule here, Tommy, have him start in 5 and 1, I have him end in 5 and 1. And that feels a lot right. In the middle there, uh, week 7, I have him losing to Kansas City at home. They can certainly win that game. Uh, and then I have them losing back-to-back -back games on the road in Week 12 and Week 13 at Green Bay at Buffalo. So you could talk me into them winning one, maybe even two out of those three games that I just mentioned and then getting to, to 13, 14, 15 wins. That feels realistic and that sounds nuts when you're talking about a 17 game schedule but there are very few holes in the San Francisco team Tommy whether Brady Ayuk is there or not I think Brock Purdy is going to continue his upward trajectory we know what Kyle Shanahan can do and I think the defense isn't going to miss a beat because that defense has been so good for so long even as they churn through these defensive coordinators as they get jobs elsewhere so again just to digest everything that we've been talking about in terms of the NFC West it sounds like you're going again two teams to make it to the postseason and then which team goes the farthest, Ryan. I think that's the 49ers as well. And I'll throw an asterisk out there. I think the Cardinals have a chance to backdoor their way into the playoffs, too. I mentioned their opportunity to win 10 games if they get lucky in there. And if that happens, we saw it last year in the AFC North, Tommy. Three teams got in there. Uh, I think there's a chance not only for this division to have all teams above 500, but maybe even three teams make it into the postseason. So you're bullish on the division. You're bullish on the Cardinals and the Niners specifically. And then uh, taking a look at the schedule, you're not so bullish on the Jets when it comes to them facing this particular division. I think you actually have the Jets losing every <laughs> single game against an NFC West opponent, Ryan. It's a good thing Lige Duzable is not on with us. No, that's right. Uh, the, the thing is, uh, I had a conversation yesterday with our buddy Pete Prisco that maybe the Buffalo Bills window is closing, and I didn't understand that, and that brings us back to the, uh, the AFC East there. I know what Aaron Rodgers is when he's healthy. The offensive line, they've tried to bolster it. They drafted Olaf Ashnu. Uh, he's not going to be a starter. But that unit has to stay healthy because if they don't, we know what can happen to the quarterback. The defense is going to be fine, even while Hassan Reddick. I'm not worried about that. But I want to see where Aaron Rodgers is after a year off being 40 years old. And that's my concern. Because if he's lights out, they're going to win a lot of those games that I have them losing. If he looks a lot like what we saw last year from the Jets in general, I think they can lose all four of those football games, Tommy. Great stuff. Ryan Wilson breaking it down on HQ. Catch R-Dub with Rick Spielman on the With the First Pick podcast. They rank the first-round rookie quarterback performances from week one of the preseason. I can tell you Caleb was number one, Michael Penix four, Drake May six. To see the rest, you have to scan the QR code and check out that podcast today.